Hey guys, I wanted to create this video to talk for a moment about minoxidil and what I think is the best means of application for minoxidil. So minoxidil is a treatment I've used for a very long time now, and it's something I have mixed feelings about. On one hand, I am glad that it is one of the few products out there that works. It works in a very weird way, as in it doesn't address the root cause of uh, male pattern baldness, which is the prevalence of DHT on the scalp. That's something that finasteride or dutasteride would take care of, but it still nevertheless uh, uh, promotes hair growth in spite of the fact that it doesn't do anything to combat androgens. But because of that, it can't be really seen as a standalone treatment because ultimately you have to do something to get the DHT under control. You have to use some sort of anti-androgen or else inevitably the minoxidil is just not going to be enough. So at best it will just save you time as a standalone uh, treatment. But if you want a long-term solution, make sure that you use as your base treatment some sort of uh, anti-androgen, whether it be finasteride, dutasteride, or on your research subject, RU58841. One second, my throat's dry. So, uh, minoxidil, to get to the point, minoxidil has uh, two different means of application. You have either the uh, liquid minoxidil, which comes in these like little uh, plastic bottles right here, or you have the foam. Now, minoxidil is available without prescription in the United States as well as the European Union. I believe you do require a prescription for it in Canada and Australia. But in the nations where it is available without a prescription, you can usually get it off patent where it's much cheaper, but usually the foam is a little bit more expensive than the liquid minoxidil. So in the past, I have usually relied on liquid minoxidil more so than foam minoxidil because it's cheaper, but also because I find that unless you have a buzz cut, the minoxidil foam is an absolute pain in the ass to use because the problem with the foam is that it looks and has the same texture as a mousse. So if you've ever used a hair mousse before, it will like expand into a white foam. So you try to apply it on the scalp, you can even like really part your hair, but it'll, it'll expand, it'll just get all over the hair. So it feels like a very, very wasteful treatment. It was so bad that I think that I was using like a bottle per week even though it's like a one month treatment right there so it just wasn't a viable uh, uh, treatment for me it was just too uh, wasteful and too much of it got on the hair and I felt like I wasn't getting enough on the scalp but it's a shame because um, the foam minoxidil actually has a lot of advantages over the liquid minoxidil so the liquid minoxidil has kind of been like my gold standard treatment for minoxidil application but the big problem with liquid minoxidil is that first it makes your hair look greasy as hell for about four hours until it dries and you think okay it's dried now so now my troubles are over maybe I can just go ahead and use it at night wake up and then it's dried but the problem with, it, with when it dries is that it will leave this um, this like flaky like residue behind that looks like dandruff even though it's not dandruff and what that residue is is just dried minoxidil and dried propylene glycol so you can't really treat it with a traditional uh, anti-dandruff treatment like Nizoril for instance so one of the ways I've negated this uh, negative cosmetic effect to an extent is by using a shower comb. So a shower comb is a fine tooth comb. You can just scrape it really hard on your scalp when you're in the shower and you can get most of that crap off. Uh, so by the time the hair dries, it won't look nearly as bad. But I find that I'm not able to get rid of the flakes completely. So the cool thing about the minoxidil foam is that it doesn't really cause dandruff. And I think it's probably because it doesn't have propylene glycol in it. I'm not exactly sure the reason why. But cosmetically, there aren't nearly as many problems with using the minoxidil foam. So I thought, okay, so minoxidil foam and minoxidil liquid both had their pros and cons. So how do I get the best of both worlds? How do I get the positives without the negatives? And I figured out the reason why, uh, I, for the reason how to do it, is that you turn foam minoxidil into liquid minoxidil and you apply it like liquid minoxidil. So therefore, you have the fast drying powers as well as the lack of dandruff that minoxidil foam gives you, but you have the ease of application and the less uh, and, the, and the less wastefulness that liquid minoxidil gives you. And the way you do that is that you take the little cap or you can use another container, um, a plastic container preferably, preferably, that the minoxidil full foam came with and then you're going to go ahead and fill it up and then you can do one of either two things. One, if you have a hot air dryer, you can go ahead and just spray it on it and the hot air will melt it down into a liquid. Or if you don't have a hot air dryer, you can go ahead and just take warm water and just submerge the cap in it and then eventually the foam minoxidil will turn into a liquid and you can go ahead and stir it up if there's any residual foam left in there. And then you just take one of these uh, liquid minoxidil droppers or something similar to it. I know you can buy like dry droppers on like Amazon or eBay and they work just as well and you go ahead and just fill up the dropper and then you just go ahead and apply it to the scalp 
and you'll have something that's as easy to apply as liquid minoxidil, yet it dries in 30 minutes, doesn't leave any dandruff, and I don't know whether or not it absorbs any better or if it works any better, but I know a lot of people have told me that the minoxidil foam actually does work a little bit better, it just absorbs better for some reason. So uh, take from that what you will, but I've used it as my uh, go-to minoxidil treatment for the past month and a half now, and I can tell you in the past that if I stopped using minoxidil for even one week, like if I went on vacation or something, I'd start I'd start to lose progress and I haven't lost any of the progress that minoxidil has given me I haven't shed it all so I know for a fact that it works now the only downside to my method is that the cap full of liquid minoxidil doesn't yield that much liquid so you may need to use a little bit more than normal but I'm someone who tries to go for full scalp coverage anyways just for extra protection so I'll usually end up using two or three caps melting them down and just applying it uh, the liquid to my scalp and that tends to work pretty well so yeah in conclusion the foam is better than the liquid minoxidil but only if you melt the foam down into a liquid so I'd love it if Rogaine or some other company would make just the pre packaged uh, liquid minoxidil that is more like the uh, minoxidil foam. Maybe for some reason they can't do that. But yeah, if you hate uh, minoxidil foam and hate minoxidil liquid, then give my method a try. I think it works pretty well. I've enjoyed it and maybe it'll work well for you too. Anyways, thanks for watching. Take care.